God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. <clears throat> Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and it cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ,
us, gracious Lord.
lesson is from the 49th chapter of Isaiah, verses 1 through 7. Here the servant, identified as Israel, speaks for herself and describes her honored mission. Called before her birth by Jeremiah and John the Baptist, the servant is not only to restore Israel. The servant's ultimate assignment is to bring news of God's victory to the ends of the earth. God in faithfulness has chosen Israel for this task. Listen to me, O coastlands. Pay attention, ye peoples from far away. The Lord called me before I was born. While I was in my mother's womb, he named me. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me away, and he said to me, You are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing in vanity. Yet surely my cause is with the Lord, and my reward with God. And now the Lord says, who warned me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, that the, and that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honored in the sight of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. He says, It is too light a thing that you should be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob, and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach up to the end of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel, his Holy One, to one deeply despised, abhorred by the nations, and slave of rulers. Kings shall see and stand up, princes, and they shall prostrate themselves, because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. Here ends the reading. Our psalm today is Psalm 40, verses 1 through 12, found on 232 and 233 in the primary hymnal. I waited patiently upon the Lord. He stooped to me and heard my cry. Many shall see and stand in awe and put their trust in the Lord. And they are they who trust in the Lord. They do not look forward to being serious or to return to all of us. Great things are they that you have done, O Lord my God. How great your wonders and your plans for us. There is none who can be compared with you. Oh, oh that I can make it known to tell them, but they are more than I know. In sacrifice and offering, you take no pleasure. You have given me ears to hear you. Burnt offerings and sin offerings I have not required. And so I said, Behold, I come. In the roll of the book, it is written concerning me. I love to do your will, O oh my God. Your law is deep in my heart. I have proclaimed righteousness in the great congregation. Behold, I did not restrain my lips. Your righteousness have I not hidden in my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your deliverance. I have not concealed your love and faithfulness from the great congregation. You are the Lord. Do not withhold your compassion from me. Let your love and your faithfulness keep me safe forever. The second lesson is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 1-9. Though God's church in Corinth is a fractious congregation beset with many conflicts, Paul opens this letter by spotlighting the multiple ways God has enriched and sustained his life as part of the divine call into the fellowship of our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul calls me an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and our brother Sosthenes. To the church of God that is in Corinth and to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, Called to be saints together with all those who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you. So 
that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called to the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Here ends the reading.
and you can't really run to him and get a hug, but if you think about it really carefully, you can feel his love around you. And I think one day when we get to heaven, that's the first thing we're going to do is run right into his arms and get that big hug. Don't you think so? We'll be waiting there for me to pop him up. Okay, so when you're starting to think things are kind of not the way you want them to be, go talk to mom and dad. And then don't forget to talk to your heavenly father. Because things are going to be okay. He has a plan. Okay? Let's hold our hands. Dear Heavenly Father, Dear Heavenly Father, help us to always trust your plan. Help us to always trust your plan. And come to you in good times. And come to you in good times. And when we need an extra hug. And when we need an extra hug. In Jesus' name, amen. Today's sermon was contributed by Pastor Nancy Nile. Grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. The verses in our gospel reading today come directly after John has baptized Jesus in the Jordan. John encounters Jesus the day after Jesus' baptism and draws attention to him. Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Again the next day, John sees Jesus walk by, and again he draws attention to him. Look, here is the Lamb of God. This time, curiosity is piqued. This curiosity inspires these two disciples of John to follow Jesus. Jesus notices them walking behind him, and he asks, What are you looking for? They respond, Where are you staying? Now Jesus could have responded with something like, I'm staying around the corner and down the block. But Jesus senses that there are much bigger questions present here. These two are not just asking where Jesus physically is staying, but rather they seem to be asking where Jesus makes his home, where Jesus' heart is, what is important to him. And so Jesus invites them to come and see. When these two disciples meet up with Jesus, they call him Rabbi, which means teacher. I wonder if they were expecting a lecture or a reading or a sermon or something. But Jesus doesn't do any of that. He just says, come and see. Come and see. And so they accept his invitation. The two go with Jesus and they don't just stay with him for an hour or two. Rather, they stay with him all day, listening, talking, learning, and getting to know Jesus. Andrew, one of these two disciples, is so moved by this encounter with Jesus that he just has to go and share the experience with his brother, Simon. And in turn, Andrew urges Simon to come and see. We have found the Messiah, Andrew explains. So Simon goes to investigate, to see what Andrew is talking about. And what an encounter Simon has with Jesus. He is changed. He is transformed. In fact, he comes out the other side of this encounter with a new name, Cephas, which is translated here. This initial invitation to those first disciples is come and see. It's the same invitation that Jesus issues to us today. A man is struggling to find a parking place. Lord, he prays, I can't stand this. If you open up a space for me, I promise to change my ways and go back to church every Sunday. Suddenly the clouds part and the sun shines on an empty parking spot, and without hesitation, the man says, Never mind, I thought one, Lord. Do you see Jesus' activity around you? Obviously, this man did not. Did you see how Jesus has been active in your life, in the world, in your neighborhood or community, in the life of your congregation? Come and see. This was Jesus' invitation. Think about what Jesus' disciples, Jesus' followers, ultimately saw while Jesus was here on earth. The disciples saw Jesus driving out demons and healing, making the blind to see, the deaf to hear, and the lame to leap with joy. Jesus touched the untouchables and was touched with oil and tears and the hair of a sinful woman. Jesus forgave sins and proclaimed, your faith has made you well. 
Jesus raised the dead, ate with sinners, invited himself to the house of the tax collector, and dared men about to stone a prostitute to throw the first stone if they had never sinned themselves. The disciples watched Jesus suffer, struggle, sacrifice, and die. The Lamb of God who took away the sin of the world. The disciples were puzzled at the resurrection, rejoiced and ate fish with Jesus by the seashore, and watched Jesus ascend to heaven. Come and see, indeed. All of this changed and transformed these followers of Jesus. They saw things that they had never seen before. And they began to experience things like they had never experienced them before. How has Jesus changed you? How has Jesus transformed you? How does Jesus help you to perceive and experience things in new ways? Who is Jesus to you? How is your life different because of Jesus? How are you inviting others to come and see this Jesus? Jesus is here with us right now. Each time people come together, or two or three are gathered, Jesus' spirit stirs among and through those who are gathered. Jesus is present in God's word, in preaching, and singing, in praising, and praying, in fellowship, and daily activities. Each time we gather around the table, Jesus is here. Jesus' real presence. Placed in our hands, lifted to our mouths, we touch, we smell, we taste. We feast upon Jesus, the Lamb of God, the body broken for us, the blood shed for us. Jesus is here. Jesus is out in the world, inviting us to join in his work. Through acts of love, kindness, mercy, forgiveness, reconciliation, justice, peace, acceptance, welcome, hospitality. God's grace is poured out abundantly for us through Jesus. Jesus, Son of God, Lamb of God, Savior of the world, who invited the disciples of long ago to come and see, is the same Jesus who invites his disciples today, you and me, to come and see. Amen.
Look upon us with favor and give us peace. 